If you've been following John's latest series over on GCN Tech, you'll know that he's been turning an old mountain bike that he found in his shed into a gravel bike. And here it is. But what I really want to know is how does John's garbage creation compare to a modern gravel bike? So with a little help from Ollie, I'm borrowing his Canyon Grail, I've come up with a couple of tests that should really challenge both bikes and find out which one is best. Before we get going though, let's have a quick run through of the bike. We've got cantilever brakes, which belong in the 80s if you ask me. Up front though, we do have modern bars with 10-speed Tiagra levers. On the front, we've got a 38-tooth race face ring. And yes, they are my road pedals. I should have put the mountain bike ones on really, shouldn't I? At back, we've got an 1134 cassette with a Shimano GRX derailleur. We've actually got pretty good tires on here. We've got Continental Double Fighter 1.9-inch kind of mountain bike tires, which is the sort of tire you would have expected to find on this mountain bike in the era. We've also got the Saracen steel frame, and then the piece de resistance, the mountain gel saddle. And it's gonna be a tough challenge because the Saracen is going up against Ollie's Canyon Grail, and it's got carbon everything. Even the blades of the brake levers are made of carbon on this. 11-speed Shimano Ultegra Di2, carbon rims, continental cyclocross tires, which may not be completely suited to the gravel, but I think the extra tread will be good when it gets a little bit boggy down the bottom. We've got 5034 ring up front and an 1134 out back. I mean, we've even got carbon bottle cages and this thing is super light. I am gonna have to put my road pedals on there though. Right, test number one. And it wouldn't be a GCN test without a hill climb in it at some point. So I thought I'd get that one out of the way at the start. It's quite a tough climb, around 800 meters. As you can see, it's pretty steep at the start. So I think I'll be in first gear. I'll do one run on this, give myself a 10, 15 minute recovery, jump on the other bike and set a time of that one as well. Three, two, one, go. Right then, run number two, and this time I'm riding the Canyon Grail. First time I've ever ridden this bike. Quite curious to see what the bars are like going up the climb. I noticed the tires on the map, or the X mountain bike were actually quite balloony and quite bumpy. So hopefully these, being lower volume, stick to the ground a little bit better. And also hopefully the size helps them roll over those big bumps more. Fully recovered now, ready to go. You count me in? Three, two, one, go. So I've just been up and back on the climb and I honestly cannot believe the difference. Like I got halfway up and I was already in less pain than I was when I was a quarter of the way up on the other one. 20 seconds total difference. So 145 on the new garbage gravel bike, as we're calling it, and then one minute 25 on this beast. It's quite, quite a difference. But the descent I think is gonna be interesting when we go to do that. Test number two is a rocky descent. It's kind of the sort of thing you find out on a gravel ride, especially in the UK, but it is quite rocky in places. So I'm gonna skip from side to side, use the grass as I need to. I'm gonna do it on the canyon first, purely because my pedals are on here and I don't wanna waste time swapping pedals more than I have to. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, go. Good. 
I do like a bit of gravity assisted fun. And on these balloon tires, this tank of a bike took eight seconds off the modern day gravel bike. Didn't feel as controlled and slowing down at the end was a bit of a challenge on these cantilevers. But you can't deny eight seconds over 450 meters is quite a bit. Right then, it's on to the final test now, and we've got something completely different in mind for that one, but it's much more applicable to real world use if you're putting your bike in and out of the car. Right then, the third and final test. We've done the hill climb, we've done the descent. We were going to do a handling circuit, but our descent and climb were actually quite technical, and we figured that covered all of the riding scenarios that you might encounter. So, we are on to a real life scenario here. Even if you don't have a car at home, at some point you're gonna take your wheels out of your bike and pop them back in. Simply, is 20 year old tech as fast as modern tech? Which wheels can I remove from the bike and put back in first? Three, two, one, go. Okay, that wheel's definitely out, it's going back in there. Nearly there. Right, front brake back on. Right then, 2019, as before, bike in top gear. Three, two, one, go. Right, rear wheel out, rear wheel back in. And go. Right then, it's results breakdown time. First up, we had this one on the climb and it took me one minute and 40 five seconds, which felt like an absolute eternity. And that was versus one minute 25 for the 2019 Canyon Grill. Then the descent and the tables were turned in favor of the 1990s Saracen that John's made in his garage. That took me just 40 seconds on the descent and it did feel fast on those bouncy tires. This one took a whopping 48 seconds. So there's still a deficit there of 12 seconds. And then finally, we had our third test, which we concocted ourselves. Slightly unusual, but potentially representative of something you might do in the real world. Taking the wheels in and out of your bike, either to clean it or to put it in the back of the car, something like that. And again, the 1990s garbage to gravel bike that John built by himself came away with a victory, beating the 2019 Canyon Grail by a whopping six seconds. But at the end of the day, what do these results mean? Well, they mean that John's 1990s garbage to gravel bike still owes six seconds to the Canyon Grail. I don't think that's surprising though, when you consider the cost of research and development that's gone into creating this 2019 masterpiece. What it does mean though, is that if you've got a little bit of spare cash lying around and you've got a little bit of time in your hands and perhaps have a frame similar to this of your own in your garage, I think it's well worth building it up into something rideable. I mean, you could make it even cheaper than this, single speed for a start. I've had a huge amount of fun riding this and that I didn't expect. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see where this bike came from and how John built it up, click on the link down here. And to see Ollie putting this bike through its paces, click down here.